Good morning, class. We are looking at uh, color coordinates, section 8.3. So we've looked at the law of sines, the law of cosines, uh, and now color coordinates. By the way, one may call it sine laws or cosine laws. So we are going to plot points using polar coordinates, converts from, uh, convert from uh, polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates and vice versa, transform equations between the two. Again, uh, formulas that uh, are basic trig identities you should be very comfortable with. We added the sine law and cosine law, more formulas, right triangle, the relationship among A, B, C, and capital A, capital B, and capital C. Angle of elevation compared to horizontal line looking up versus angle of depression. And bearing, you can have just north and just one angle compared to north in a clockwise direction. Or north, south, and Accordingly, you can see, for example, this one is north 30 degrees. East. So the bearing, there are two ways to look. Let's look at the new stuff. In a two-dimensional coordinate system, each point on a plane is determined by either a rectangular format x comma one, which is what a distance from the y-axis. And first, this one is from the y-axis. This one is from the x-axis. Or polar or comma theta, a distance from a reference point, we call it a pole, and an angle from a reference direction called the polar axis. Here's the summary. So you have the polar axis. Polar is represented with R and theta and can be represented infinitely many, simply because this angle is not unique. We can add 2k pi where k or n is an integer. We can change this to a negative and add a pi. So there are infinitely many different ways we can show that. So what's happening here, if this point P has coordinates x comma y, it can be represented with r comma theta as well. So how do we go, and this is the summary, how do we go from uh, polar to rectangular? We say X is R cosine theta, Y is R sine theta, because as you can see, X cosine of theta is X over R. Cosine of theta is X over R. Sine of theta is Y over R. That's how we arrive at this. If we wanna go back, x squared plus y squared is r squared and tan theta is y over x. You should always adjust for the quadrant in case it's not in the first quadrant. But for example, uh, we want to plot a two comma pi over four. So here's your polar axis. So from the polar axis, we come up with the angle pi over four in a positive direction. And then we go up two tick marks. So take a look at how we do that. So first, this angle, pi over four, and over here, we make up one and two tick marks. So it's two comma pi over four. That's the final graph. How about negative three, two pi over three? How do we represent a negative number with any angle? So first we draw the angle of interest, whatever it might be, okay? And we go to the opposite direction. So if we go here, let's say two tick marks and make it positive two, down here makes it negative two, that's the concept. In this case, we are going to make up two pi over three, obviously uh, two pi over three, 
puts us into the second quadrant as far as the graphing is concerned. So this is the polar axis. We are going to make up two pi over three. And now, if this was positive, we would say one, two, three, and this would be the point. Since it's negative, we are going to go in the opposite direction. And this would be negative three, two pi three. So again, anytime R is negative, first draw the angle. By the way, you should always first draw the angle in the case of a polar coordinate. So you draw the angle. Positive, you go so many tick marks in the positive direction. Negative, you go in the opposite direction. So just in case. They then ask for this point, but this one is located at positive three. Two pi over three in case. All right, let's plot a few points starting with the part A. So we are going to start from the polar axis and we make up the angle first, which is five pi over three. That puts us into the fourth quadrant. So you draw a line here and you go how many tick marks? Three. Two comma negative power four. We always start with theta or comma theta. So this would be pi over four. This would be negative pi over four. Remember, counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. Now we draw a line. How many tick marks? Two of them. So two negative pi over four. Three zero, look at zero is the theta or the angle. That means along the polar axis. Also you can call it the X axis because when we compare the two. And so you simply have to go with three tick marks. That's all you have to do. In this case, we draw pi over four in a positive direction. Now, if this, if this number was positive, we would draw a line and we would two tick marks. Now that it's negative, when we draw the line, we go in the opposite direction. So this would be the positive. So this point would be positive two power four. In fact, let me just write that. This one, has the coordinates positive two pi over four. You go in the opposite direction, two tick marks, and that would be negative two pi over four. All right, we want to plot this. Again, we make up pi over six. And then align with how many tick marks? Three of those. So this is three pi over six. Now we want to plot the same point such that R is positive, so we still want number three. And theta is between two pi and four pi. So all you have to do, add two pi, add two pi. So in other words, this one, you go a complete revolution from here, which made it to pi over six, you go a complete revolution. So we are adding two pi. And of course, that means 
So we are adding two pi because we want it to be between two pi and four pi. And that means 13 pi over six, which we are adding a complete revolution. So from here, one complete revolution. So from pi over six, that's basically what it means. Now we want the same point. We want the same point, but this time we want R to be negative. So R to be negative. So we want to make this one negative too. In general, let's look at the bottom and remind everybody. Uh, R theta, I can add two pi and any multiple of that. I can add four pi, 10 pi, or negative four pi. It doesn't matter. It gives me the same point. R is positive. If I want to make R negative, I add pi. In other words, and pi or plus 2k pi, which means an odd multiple of pi. I can add pi. I can add 3 pi. I can add 5 pi. So this means okay, this is even number times 2 pi. This means odd number times pi. Okay, that's the meaning of it. So pi, 3 pi, 5 pi. So the easiest would be just add pi here and change this to a negative. Add pi and change this to a negative. So what happens, we go back to the original one, which was, which was pi over 6. We go pi or 180 degrees, which puts us here. And then we have to go to the opposite because it's negative three. So take a look at what happens. By the way, pi over six and pi, they add up to seven pi over six. So seven pi over six. And this way is positive. The opposite side is the negative. So we get to this same point. Now we want theta to be between zero and negative two pi, and we want r to be positive. We don't want to change this. So all we have to do, remember what we can do. We can add two pi or we can subtract two pi. It makes no difference. That's the meaning of two k pi here. Because they want us to be between zero and negative two pi, we are going to subtract two pi from pi over six. And that gives us negative 11 pi over six, which means from here, we're gonna go this way. So we're gonna go this way. This is the negative direction, 11 pi over six, and draw a line with positive three tick marks. That's the meaning of it. Very straightforward. I just wanted to make sure we're comfortable with uh, graphing. So again, in short, plotting any points in polar coordinates, start with data, always. R is positive, then so many tick marks, R in that direction, in the positive direction, R is negative, go opposite that, and uh, same number of tick marks. But converting from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates, again, notice this point P has coordinates X comma Y or comma theta. Therefore, if polar is R comma theta, and we want to go to the rectangular form of X comma Y, X is R cosine theta, Y is R sine theta. We went over that when we went over the summary. And the justification is very simple. All you have to do, look at this. Okay, so sine theta is y over r. Cosine theta is x over r. So the cross product proves that. So we want to convert. First, let's quickly do the drawing. It doesn't take long. So we do pi over six, 
and going this many tick marks, six. So this is pi over six and we are going how many tick marks? Six tick marks. X is R cosine theta. So it's six cosine pi over six. And we know cosine of uh, pi over six is square root of three over two. And that's X. Y is R sine theta. And sine theta sine of pi over six. We know it to be one half. And of course we get three. So the point has polar coordinates six comma pi over six, rectangular coordinates three square root of three comma three. Let's go with this pair. First, we are going to go in a negative direction, which is a clockwise pi over four. So I'll mix it minus pi over four. And then since R is minus four, we go to the opposite side. So take a look. Here's minus pi over four, right? And if this was positive four, we go with four tick marks, but it's negative four, we go on the opposite side and with four tick marks, now it's negative four minus pi over four. So you want to be very careful with that. X is R cosine theta, plug in. And cosine of negative pi over four is the same as cosine of pi over four, it's square root of two over two. And four and two cancel each other, you get two, so minus two square root of two. So, Perhaps what I want to write here for you is that understand this is the same as cosine of power four because cosine is an even function, everybody. Y is R sine theta, that means minus four times sine of minus power. Now we know this one to be an odd function, negative sine power four. So this negative and this negative, their product is positive for sine of power four and sine of pi over four, just like cosine of pi over four is square root of two over two. And of course, these two cancels out the four changes to two, so two square root of two. Therefore, this point having coordinates minus four minus pi over four in polar coordinates has negative two square root of two comma two square root of two in rectangular coordinates. Convert from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. And again, at the bottom, we have the synopsis of it going both ways. It's really a good practice to plot the point. Now we want to determine R and theta. So here's zero three. We want to determine R and theta. So notice here's the angle, which is pi over two. Here's the distance from the origin or from the pole. Therefore, 
r is 3, theta is pi over 2. And so we have the pair 3 comma pi over 2. Now we want to write all of this. So first let's write the part A, the same thing, 3 comma pi over 2. Now, if you want to add uh, situations that uh, theta is between zero and negative two pi, so again, that's that's what we are looking for, and we are done. But if you want to make theta between zero and negative two pi, all we have to do is subtract two pi. So, if you subtract two pi, that gives you the second part. So pi over two minus two pi gives you negative three pi over two. Um, the next one says, let's make R negative. And remember how you make R negative. And specifically they want theta between zero and two pi. So add pi, remember that, add pi or subtract pi, either way is fine. So if I add pi, I get three pi over two. So let me actually write the proper answer for this one would be minus three and three pi over two and three pi over two is the same as minus pi over two, but since we want it between zero and two pi, it's three pi over two. I'm gonna change that in a moment. And you can uh, keep on adding two pi for, I mean, again, I can write it infinitely many different ways. So if I add two pi here, for example, I get five pi over two, another two pi or subtract two pi. So we better actually change this one. three pi over two simply because of what they want here. So since we want it to be positive, we are going to go with three pi over two. But again, of course, remember uh, three pi over two is the same as three pi over two is the same as minus pi over two. Okay, so we are here and the negative three brings us back up there. So this is uh, on the y axis, this uh, pair zero comma three. So quickly, if we wanted to look at others, for example, this uh, pair a comma zero, this is on the x axis, x comma y. For polar coordinates, it's the same thing, a comma zero. Now over here, if it's zero a, as it was in the previous page, it becomes a comma power two. You really want to think of this, although we write R first, but as far as plotting, we are concerned with data first. Uh, now, this is located at minus a zero. So a pi, remember, we keep the uh, r always positive unless they ask us otherwise. So again, this is something very important. r must always be positive unless they ask us otherwise. So therefore it's a, but this angle is pi. Right here, this angle is three pi over two. I mean, you could say minus pi over two, but let's stick with the positive angle from zero to two pi. If you look at the points, the answer should come to you. You don't have to really memorize it. All right, we want to go from two comma negative two from a rectangular coordinate to polar coordinate system. 
uh, it's really a good idea to plot and determine R and theta. So plotting is the idea. So first we plot that. So what do we want? We want R, which is X squared plus Y squared. So let's calculate the R. And again, R is always positive unless they tell us to make it negative. So let's go with Pythagorean theorem. And that's really come from the Pythagorean theorem in essence. So X squared plus Y squared, you square this one, you get four, you square this one, you get four, and they add up to eight and square root of eight. I hope you know it's two square root of two, or you can write it as four times two, four comes out, two remains. This is elementary algebra. What about theta? Theta is always tan inverse of y over x, and you have to figure out uh, the quadrant. So y is tan inverse. So tan theta is y over x. Theta is tan inverse of y over x, which means tan inverse of negative two over two, which makes it negative one. And that's negative pi over four. So we came up with R and we came up with the theta. So we can write that. Now, if we want this one to be positive, let's say if they say from zero to two pi, all you have to do add two pi. Add two pi and it makes it three pi over four. So my apologies, seven pi over four. So two pi. So for this part, just add, uh, just add two pi or eight pi over four. So it gives us the same number two square root of two and seven pi over four. Now, what if we want R to be negative? Again, I wanna make sure everybody's clear on that. We want R to be negative, make this one negative. And all you have to do just add pi, if you will. And it will do the job. Or three pi, if you will. Or five pi, okay. So, I'm going to add pi here, and that gives me four, let's just write it as four pi over four. So that gives me three pi over four. Okay, so if I wanted to write it with a different color. This is the sum of negative pi over four with pi. You don't have to go with pi, you can go with multiples of pi, but uh, since we want it from zero to two pi, we really should add just pi, okay? When I say any multiples of, odd multiples of pi will do that. More specifically from zero to two pi, we have to be careful. All right. Now rectangular to polar, x comma y to polar, x squared plus y squared is r squared. Tan theta is y over x, and you want to adjust for quadrant. They explain how to do it here. I would, and I will explain it to you, but I always just come up with this answer and adjust for the quadrant. So the first quadrant is this. If it's in the second quadrant, you have to add pi. If it's in the third quadrant, you have to add pi. If it's in the fourth quadrant, you don't have to, it gives you the negative way. This becomes a negative angle. So they say the first and fourth don't do anything for the other ones, add pi. Fine, you can do that if you want to memorize that or just you know adjust it 
according to the quadrant that we are in. So a quadrant uh, with this quadrant one or four, uh, it's just tan inverse of r over x, a quadrant two and three, you get the same thing and add a pi. I wouldn't worry about that. As I said, you know, I would adjust it by looking at the location. So you can always do that. All right. We want to transform equations between the two, between polar and rectangular forms. And we already have all of the above. So in this case, we have R equals four sine theta. And we want to identify the graph after we change it to a rectangular format. Now, uh, sometimes there are some tricks involved. In this case, anytime you have R, and then on the other side, you have something involving sine or cosine, the trick is to multiply both sides by R. So that's the trick. When we do that, here's what happens. R times R means R squared, which is X squared plus Y squared. R times sine theta is Y. Therefore, this left side is X squared plus Y squared. The right side is whatever this number is, in this case, four times Y. Uh, we're gonna move the four Y to the left and put it next to Y squared. Now this is fine and dandy. This one, when we put them together, we want to make it into a perfect square trinomial. This is B divided by two becomes negative two squared is positive four. I hope everybody remembers how to make this to a perfect square trinomial. So we need to add four to both sides. And what happens to this, it will be the variable and b over two, including the sign. If it's plus two, it's plus two, it's minus two, minus two. So this becomes y minus two. Okay, quantity squared. Now, what is this? I'm reminding you that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Everybody remembers this is the circle centered at zero, zero with the radius r. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared is a circle centered at h comma k with the radius r. So this one, h is zero, k is two. The radius is the square root of four or two. So this is a circle centered at zero two with the radius of two. We're going to continue with the same type. We are transforming to polar this time. Sometimes there are tricks involved. Sometimes it's just the observation. So on the left side, we can factor the three out. And we know that already here, but R squared is X squared plus Y squared. So that I can change it with R squared because I'm going to polar format. Two times X, I'm gonna replace the X with R cosine theta. We can divide both sides by R. So what happens is this goes away. This becomes three R on the left side. You can leave it like that and many times they do, but in a case that you can solve for R, it's really a good practice to do that. You divide by three, you divide by three. And that's the polar form. So 3x squared plus 3y squared equals 2x. The rectangular form gives us r equals 2 thirds cosine theta. Uh, we want to 
transform this into a rectangular format. And I hope you remember the trick we did in one of the cases. Whenever we have R on one side and something involving sine or cosine on the other side, we multiply both sides by R. That's the trick. So the left side becomes R squared. The right side becomes six R cosine theta. So we are multiplying this both sides by R. So what is R squared? X squared plus Y squared. What is R cosine theta? So six X. And again, we do the same thing as we did Previously, we moved the 6x and we put it next to x squared. We want to complete this square and we notice this is b divided by 2 and square that. We need to add 9 to both sides. And the left side this part, it's always the variable and whatever b over two is, in this case, negative three squared. This is a circle centered at three comma zero with the radius of square root of nine, which makes it three. This is a circle centered at three zero. Radius is the square root of nine or three. Let's transform this rectangular equation to polar equation. So we are going to replace the x with r cosine theta and y with r sine theta. And the right side is a number, so don't bother with that. So we have four r squared sine theta cosine theta or cosine theta sine theta in any order it makes no difference and you remember that two so sine two theta is two sine theta cosine theta so if you change this to two and you put the two here, you have two r squared sine two theta equals nine. And this really doesn't get more simplified and that's just as good. Let's look at a few transformation uh, pretty fast. So we are exposed to various examples quickly. How do we do this? If it's given, by the way, in rectangular format, we want to go to polar. If it's given in polar, you want to go to rectangular. This is given in a rectangular format. Obviously, x squared plus y squared is r squared, and x is r cosine theta. So we change this one to r squared, this one to r cosine theta. We can divide both sides by r, and r equals cosine theta, and we are done. By the way, you may recognize this is a circle and you can make it happen, this is a circle, but it's um, in essence seems to be a simpler equation. Y equals negative three is in rectangular format. So we're gonna change the Y to R sine theta and we're done. In some instances, they may write r is minus three over sine theta, and that's fine if in case you see it somewhere, it has the same meaning. Again, some do solve it for r, they make it negative three over sine theta. 
you don't have to either way is fine now obviously this is a polar format we want to go to a rectangular format and as you recall when we have r and then sine on the other side or cosine on the other side the trick was to multiply by r so let's multiply both sides by r this becomes r squared this becomes r sine theta, this becomes r. And really there is not much you can do. You want to change this. This is r squared. Let me just write this so everybody. Everybody knows this is r squared. So it's x squared plus y squared. And r sine theta, everybody knows it's y. But what is r? r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So if r squared is this, r must be the square root of that, okay? And again, you can always use those. r is 4. Well, we can multiply both sides. We can square both sides. r squared is 16. So what is r squared? x squared plus y squared. Now I hope you realize that the format in polar is much simpler. This is a circle centered at 0, 0 with the radius 4. Simply r equals 4 represents that. That's why the polar, uh, you know, uh, form is helpful sometimes, okay? Again, you remember the trick, anytime we have a R on one side, sine cosine on the other side, the trick is to multiply by R. Let's do that. Let's multiply by R. So this is r squared, which means x squared plus y squared. r sine theta, y plus r cosine theta, x. And again, we can bring everything to the left side, work it out, and it becomes a circle. They didn't ask what type of a graph did they, this is. But if they do, you have to bring everything to the left. You put the x next to x squared, y next to y squared, both of them become negative. And then you come up with a circle. You have to come up with the center and the radius. They didn't ask, we're not gonna bother with that. So this is a very fast synopsis of how you go from one format to the next. We have mix and match here. Again, just to remind you, we want to convert from rectangular form x comma y in this case minus one minus square root of three uh, to a polar coordinate so number one we're going to plot this and since x and y are both negative it puts us in the third quadrant so i, I hope nobody has any problem with that so this has coordinates minus one minus square root of three this point has coordinates minus one minus square root of three so if we want to go with two polar, we need to find R and we need to find theta. So finding R is easy. X squared plus Y squared is R squared. So R is the square root of X squared plus Y squared, which means square this number and square this number. This gives you one. This gives you three, so square root of four is two. So we got R, all we have to do find theta. Now, we know tan theta is y over x. Which makes it positive square root of three. And as you know, this is a common arc. So we should know theta is pi over three. However, here's what's important, paying attention to the quadrant 
and that's why we plot the point. This is the answer for theta, but we know it's in the third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, also tangent is positive because negative over negative makes it positive. So we must pay attention to that. We add pi. Again, this is what I mean by adjusting. You don't have to memorize it. Just look at the graph. Look at the graph and adjust it. So we need to add pi. Pi and pi over three makes it four pi over three. And therefore, the pair is two comma four pi over three.